Hey everybody, this is Lance from SinfulKittyBoudoir.com and today we're going to do another tutorial on black and white conversions. This one, however, is going to utilize the screen and multiply blend modes of your layers palette. So why don't we go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is desaturate the image. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the layers palette. We're going to select an adjustment layer and, and choose the black and white adjustment layer. Just like with the last tutorial, I'm not going to mess with any of the reds, yellows, greens, those filters. I'm just going to leave them at their default settings. The next thing I do when I convert to black and white is I focus on the eyes. I want to get the eyes just the way I like them and I don't want to lose them when we start messing around with the shadows. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select another adjustment layer. This time we're going to select curves and since we're only focused on the eyes we're not really going to pay attention to the effect to the overall image. I just want to look at the eyes and see what I'm doing with the eyes by manipulating this curve layer. So that looks about where I want it. I don't want to lose any of the detail but at the same time I want to make sure that it's pretty light. So I'm pretty happy with that there. Next thing I'm going to do is make sure that this layer doesn't affect the rest of the image because it's really only the eyes that I'm focusing on. So I'm going to invert the layer mask for this particular layer by selecting Command I. And you can see that it basically takes away everything that this layer did, masks it out so that it doesn't affect the rest of the image. Now I'm going to take my paintbrush, which is already selected here, and I'm going to make sure that my color swatch is set to the default black and white and since my mask is black I'm going to switch that to white so that white is the active color and I'm going to paint in this area around the eyes so that the eyes show what changes we made in the curves layer. My flow rate is set to about 10 percent here. So we're just going to color in here. I'm going to make that brush a little bit smaller so it doesn't affect too much of the eye area. And as you can see over here on the layer mask you can see these two tiny little dots. That's really the only area that I'm focused on which is the eyes. Okay so now that we've got the eyes where we want them now we're going to create a screen layer or a layer that we're going to set to, to screen in the blend mode. What I like to do is use the stamp visible tool where it basically takes all of the layers underneath it that are visible, flattens them, and puts them into a completely separate layer so that your whole PSD file is not flattened, just, just that one layer. So to, to do that, I'm going to select Shift, Option, Command, E and that creates a brand new layer with all of the other layers underneath it flattened into one layer. I'm going to rename this screen and I'm going to do the same thing before I mess around with this layer I'm going to do the same thing shift option command E and I'm going to call this layer multiply. So now I'm going to go back to the screen layer I'm going to change the blend mode to screen and then I'm going to do the same with the multiply layer except I'm going to select multiply. So you can see if I hide the multiply layer the screen layer makes the entire image very very bright and the multiply layer makes the image very very dark. So now at this point I'm going to reduce the opacity of the multiply layer to about 50 percent. This is really to your liking. What you're wanting to look for here is that you're getting some of the detail back in your shadows but you're not making the image too bright in, in the highlights. So I think that is about where I wanted it in terms of the midtones and the shadows and any areas where you want to fine-tune you basically just add a layer mask so I'm gonna do that for both of these layers make sure the layer mask is selected 
And so I'm on the multiply layer and I make, made sure my layer mask is selected. And now I'm going to go back over to my paintbrush, make sure that that's still active. But this time my layer mask is white, so I need to make sure my active color is black. And I'm just going to keep the same flow rate, which is about 10%. And I'm just going to color in those areas where I want to lighten it up a little bit. Remember what it's doing is masking out the multiply layer and allowing the screen layer underneath to show. And in this case, the effect is that it's lightening my image wherever I paint. So this is really just fine tuning as far as I'm concerned. Just want to make sure that those areas where we had some some small midtones and highlights, make sure that those show through. And then I get rid of the dark shadows where I don't want them. And let's bring back some of this curtain here just a little bit. Okay. Now, I'm going to make sure that the screen layer is active now. And these areas here on the sheets where you see that the highlights are blown, I want to try and bring those back in as much as I can. So I'm going to color that in. Just like that. Now you can see that it's still pretty bright so what I want to do is maybe bring that down just a little bit let's say to about 85 percent see that's 85 percent and I think I'm pretty happy with that uh, if you want to do some more fine-tuning you can do that and as with my other tutorial, one of the things that I really like about black and whites is to have a really contrasty type image. So what I'm going to do is go make sure that my top layer is selected and I'm going to do stamp visible one more time. Shift Option Command E and this one I'm going to name overlay and I'm going to add a layer mask for this layer and I'm going to change the blend mode to guess what overlay okay so there's that contrast I like but look at those shadows those are pretty dark there and I don't really want that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this back just a little bit to about 60 percent and I'm going to mask out those areas that we lost a lot of the detail in the shadows so white <clears throat> excuse me white is my layer mask color so my active color on the swatch over here is black still with paint paintbrush selected so I'm gonna go ahead and color in here mask air mask this area out so that we have those shadows coming back do the same up here and down here in the hair. Okay, so just to see the before and after, I'm going to deselect that, and you can see it makes a pretty dramatic difference. Now I'm noticing that we're losing just a little bit in the eyes, so I'm going to paint that area in so we can get that back. There we go. And we're about done with this layer. The last thing I do, just for artistic effect, because I'm a huge fan of the, the black and white high grain films, so what I like to do is add another layer that I'm going to call a noise layer. So I create a new layer and I'm going to reduce the, well actually before I do that, what I want to do is I want to fill this layer with a 50% gray and I'll show you why here in just a second. So you select edit, you go down to fill 
and the contents here you you will have quite a few options here all you have to do is select 50 percent gray it's already selected because that's what i did before in a previous project so 50 percent gray we select ok and you can see it covers our entire image what you'll do at this point is change the blend mode to overlay now as you can see if i hide the layer it really has no effect on the image. You can't see it. But whatever changes you make to this image, for example, let me select my default colors here, black and white, paintbrush. If I were to draw on her face here, you can see that it has an effect because this gray layer is still on top of the image even though you can't see it. If I hide the gray layer, it's not there but I don't really want that so I'm going to take those off what I do want to do however is add noise to this so we're going to go up to filter noise add noise and there's that artistic look I like and you can fade that in and out as you wish you can also increase the amount of noise and then fade it out whatever you want to do but it's it's customizable so I select OK, fade that back just a little bit. Now I want you to see what happens. That's at 100% there. I want you to see what happens when we change that to soft light. It softens the noise up just a little bit. So it's really your choice. If you want a little bit harder noise, select overlay, or you can select soft light. It's uh, really customizable. It's one of the reasons I like this technique. And at this point, I would say that I'm pretty much done. I have the choice to add some contrast if I want, or add another curves layer and increase the shadows even more. But it's really your choice. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and leave me some comments if you have any suggestions or if you just want to say hi. Thanks for watching.